This is kind of a unique video as this is currently my, my bootloader right here. Uh, Fedora is really a weird distribution when it comes to modifying Grub, and it's mainly based on its partition structure. It needs three partitions, which is a little different than most distributions, as it needs a boot partition, a regular root partition, and then it needs an EFI partition inside of the boot. So boot EFI is typically partitioned off to another thing. Uh, they do this, I think, for security, and also like if you're encrypting a drive, you don't wanna necessarily give away the dash boot. Having said that, that's an important tidbit before you watch me do this in a live environment because I did not know that prior, or at least it didn't click in my brain. The second thing is the grub.config file is typically stored and read in the dash boot grub dash grub.cfg file. It's where everything puts it. It's where all the documentation say to put it. That's not going to work in Fedora because of what I just explained. And uh, where it actually ends up being, which you're going to see towards the end of the stream uh, or the end of this video, is it's actually in boot EFI dash EFI dash Fedora dash grub dot CFG. So having said all that, hindsight's 2020. Let's get in. You're going to see some entertainment here. Me just pounding around and just beat my head against a wall as I figure all this out. So let's get into it. Well, this would be dual booting. But once you see this, I'm telling you, you don't think it matters, but it matters. It really does. Um, do we got, yeah, there we go. Let's go into here. Now, I did create, uh, we don't have it here. Repo, clone, top five. What, what was it? Uh, I think it was top five bootloader. Hmm. GS repo list. All right, here's all my repos, top five bootloader themes. That's what it was. Dude, I think this was one of my first repos because, ah, uh, repo clone. Hey, we're going to grab that bootloader theme. Does this work in Fedora? Probably not, but we'll fix it up. So here is our nice little project. I, man, it's been a long time since I did this video. I probably need to redo it. I'm just kind of sick of making YouTube videos, to be honest with you, though. Just kind of want to mess around on Twitch for the rest of my life. <laughs> goals, goals. All right. Let's see here. Now, I want to say we got to do Grubby and update Grub's not going to work for this. Does update Grub... Yeah, I don't think that does work. There is a grubby command. Let's do help. Let's do a DLDR grubby. What what do people use grubby for? Nothing. All right, that's not in TLDR. A refind is pretty good, Zat. Uh, you could use it. It's, it's a grub alternative. Uh, I used refind in the past for triple booting so i had a uh, hackintosh using open core and then i had linux and then i had windows and refine did the best job of triple boot where grub is possible of doing it but there was a lot of manual configuration where refine did a better job of automatically grabbing all of them so refine's great for triple booting if you want to go that route but a lot of times triple booting is more trouble than it's worth in my personal opinion so I don't know if this will work let's uh let's go ahead and do an install oh, we're gonna need a pseudo install on this one because we are messing with the bootloader all right what theme we got Vimix cyberpunk showdown fallout and cyber e part of this project let's do cyber re for now because it's my favorite out of these Let's see if it grabs it. It did. It found it all. So with this simple project, we just did an install. It does look like it worked. 
let's just do a reboot and we should see a screen. I do want to modify the timeout to be, I don't think we even have a timeout. I think we'll change it from a timeout to a selection. Oh man, one second. I got to take care of somebody in chat. <sighs> All right. Mm -mm. Oh, one does not simply make changes to grub. Okay, cool. I saw the dot adult dot com and I was like, oh no. <laughs> I, I clicked on it on my other screen just to make sure. I was like, uh, okay, cool. <laughs> I can I can click on that on stream. Oh, so. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. So we fixed our boot partition for the most part. We just got to get grub working. Grub looks not good. So probably the easiest way to do this would be uh, DNF install grub customizer. Now, I think this got deprecated, but we'll see. Grub customizer. Oh, man. Um, Grub Customizer does not support Wayland either. Hmm. Unfortunate. Quite unfortunate, but that's okay. We'll do a pseudo vim etc default grub. We'll do it all manually. Uh, let's do it. It's in vim, I think. I keep forgetting. I need to make that alias. So this is our vim file right now. Technically, that should work, but if we look, let's do a LL a boot grub dash themes cyber re. So that's there, but I bet you if we do an LL a boot grub, there's nothing but the themes folder because in Fedora. The folder is no longer grub, but grub2, I bet you. So when it's looking at the themes, yeah. LL command not found. Okay, whatever. Remind me to copy my bash RC to root because actually, let's just take care of that real fast. To root. I'll uh, we'll just do root, whatever. There we go. Uh, ba 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 ba. Pseudo ls boot grub2. Okay, so that's where everything is. So we'll just do a pseudo move boot grub. And then we got themes. So we're gonna just take that themes folder, drop it into boot grub two, like this. And just making sure, probably a recursive, uh, recursive. Oh, maybe, no, for folders, you don't need to do a recursive. All right, so we move the themes over there. Well, let's go sudo ls boot grub. Nothing's there, so we can do a pseudo remove boot grub. Ba ba ba. RM directory. Clear that out. So now if we do an ls boot grub2, sudo that. You can see we now have the themes directory with like our cyber re. And even to verify that, let's go themes. You can see CyberRE. So coming back over to here, what we do is just insert two, boom. All right. So that's pretty good, but we're not done yet. We're going to make this look good by... I think we got to do a make config now. Oh, nice, HGH. What's going to be your next... Uh, what's going to be your next character in Old Path of Exile? 
I'm still I'm still rocking my pet build. I think I'm only like level 85 though. I haven't finished maps. I think I'm at like tier seven or eight. I'm getting there. I just been slacking, slacking, doing work and stuff. All right. Now make config. Let's just go into our build and look at that project we used for for this. Uh, let's just cat install dot sh and for fedora we should be able to do something like this pseudo bam all right that should rewrite everything See what we got. Ba -ba. All right, here we go. Pseudo reboot. And now everything should be right with the world. A lot of manual configuration there just because I messed up Grub. But uh, that Grub file works great on Debian. I want to say it even works on Arch pretty well. Just not uh, Fedora. Fedora did a little bit different configuration on the Grub. Son of a... Mm, man, come on. Uh. Hmm. <sighs> let's, let's see. There must have been something else I missed. Going bow build or necro poison SRIs. All right. So why is our theme not applying here? That's a little strange. Well, let's take a look at our build top five again. Let's just cat that install. Because I swear there's something in here. So this is just the command it's using to run. This did work. We manually ran that. Mm-hmm. It's almost like it's ignoring my grub file. Is the grub configuration file different from etc default grub in Fedora? Let's do an ls of etc default. Because I feel like something's different. No. Let's go grub2 config file. There's something I'm missing. Uh, grub config. Fedora. What is going on with it? So, there's grub2 config.cfg. That's fine. So, you invoke grub2 make config utility, which should write out that uh, the default temp files in etc grub d probably mess with this since we're doing that so etc grub.d probably has different let's just switch to super user uh we're we're into it we, we got this let's clear it let's go to etc uh da, da, da. etc grub.d oh yeah 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 this is what's up. Cat 41. So how do we implement it using the grub.d config files? So what this is, is the modular configuration and what each one does, Grub goes through and grabs instead of just using the etc default Grub. 
so the question is, how in the world do I add theme with grub.d? So reading this, we could do persistent changes using the grubby tool. Let's see if there's a theme section of the grubby tool. Set default, blah, blah, blah. That sets the kernel, set info. So if you're doing kernel parameters, you just use grubby. That's pretty simplistic. But I wonder if grubby has a theme. I bet you it does. So we got update kernel, all. Customize the grub2 configuration file. Hmm. So zero, zero header loads grub2 settings from here. And then it goes down the line. So something in our file is getting overwritten by these other ones that get loaded. Hmm. So let's see what that is. Not the way I want to do it, but this one's doing super user. We're looking for theme is what we're looking for. I don't see theme here. So 10 Linux. Yeah, so that's changing Linux command line. Ah. Uh, sub menu true. Mm. I wonder. This might break the system. So let's do it. But let's say we copy etc default grub to here and we'll label this uh 45 underscore Titus defaults. All right, so we got the Titus defaults here. Um, and if we cap 45 Titus defaults, let's make sure. What happens if I just throw this in here? Hmm. So this is what yank that and then we're going to do an EOF so we're going to grab that um, let's pop over to Titus defaults let's uh, toss that right here let's paste that delete and go EOF what do you guys think possible maybe stupid I don't know feel like probably not the way to do it but it's a little bit hacky doing it this way let's do a ch mod looks like 755 for the mod and we're going to change our defaults so now if we do the list we'll cat a 41 you can see it looks like that and really what we're doing is cat 45 uh, and it's doing all that but cat 40 what does this look like uh, I think this is wrong feel feel like I'm doing it wrong I feel like we should do Linux entry or something like that to put these in. Oh, hell. Both should work. Oh, let's see. 
Anybody else in chat? Yeah, I've never used grub.d config files, so this is me just kind of hacking away at it. Ah, I really don't like this. I think we could do like a make config check install maybe. Because <laughs> this seems sketch. Super sketch. The way I'm doing it. It feels wrong. And usually if it feels wrong, it's it is wrong. <laughs> um if anything, you think it would just be like an echo of what we're doing, but Let's see if there's a, a verify. Let's let's verify our grub2 make config. I think if we don't do an output to that, I think we can just output it directly. So it's a way to check. I mean, that might work. <laughs> so this is what the grub config should look like. So if we do a cat of boot grub and then grub config, this is what the computer's reading or grub's reading on startup. And you can see all this. And since we're adding all that at the end of the file, technically this should work. So if we look at this, we just do an output and the output just goes directly into this one file that controls grub. You never want to edit that file directly because on the next MK config, it would just overwrite it. So that's why we're adding this modular grub D configuration kind of thing. But uh, mm, still don't feel great about it. I feel like it will work though. So it'll generate the grub file, it'll output to there, and then when we reboot, we should now have the theme. Yeah, worst case, it just completely bricks our install here and we're not able to boot. That'd be sad, but I feel like it's gonna get to our login screen with <sighs> nothing whole lot of nothing. Hmm. Mm -mm. <sighs> Rethinking my life choices right now. <laughs> Come on, man. Ah, oh, okay. Yeah, but if we cat the boot of grub2, grub.cfg, you can see our stuff's there. So let's do vim of etc. I'm, I'm going to do it wrong, guys. We're going to do what it says not to do. Just to test. I swear there's like a theme somewhere in here. No, there's only one theme. Grub terminal output console. Okay. Let's just look up. I swear there's just a setting. I think it's I think it's reading our settings, but our settings are wrong. Fedora has a weird default grub 
that just does not like to be changed. Grub, a fedora grub theme. Let's look at another person's example. Clean install, blah, blah, blah. And rimmed, okay, the terminal output console is what's doing it. Still shows the old grub menu, having the same problem, bro. If you don't blink, there's a very brief error message. What is it? If you have overwritten it, then it will never get updated by the kernel install for neural kernel since installing a kernel update now puts the new grub.config changes with the file under grub to and that's exactly what we want. So I think for us, just doing what that guy did should fix our issue. If you look at the content in boot EFI, EFI Fedora, you will see this content. Yeah, prefix grub. Let's double check this right here. Let's just cat this grub config like this guy has. Oops, wrong, wrong. And that's interesting, interesting. Always, always something weird. Some, some distros like to do that. Sometimes you just run into some weird stuff and you can see this is exactly what it is. Ooh, why isn't that redirecting? What? What? So this is what it's reading, but it's not reading our file. Do not edit this file. It's automatically generated. BS, it's not automatically generated. So they just change the location and it never references it. Why? I guess we can just output it to that file. Screw it. Uh, grub2, mk config. Let's just output it. Forget you. I don't know why you're not updating, but I'm going to update you. <laughs> I still, I know I've, I've, I've gone completely minimalistic and have gotten rid of of obsidian and I only use vim notes and then like the home screen for like little to do's. So I just didn't really utilize a lot of the advanced features of obsidian. Thanks so much for the sub there, Patrick and the prime from AAC. Thank you. All right, let's reboot. This one's going to work. It was just a weird fedora setting at, uh, after all this. I, I just know it's going to work now. I feel good about it. It's just strange how Fedora operates compared to every other distro on Grub. But it's going to work. Son of a... Ah! <sighs> Starting to lot like a Fedora. Fedora, why? Why you do this? All right. <laughs> I knew that was coming, Ashlyn. I knew it was coming. Uh, <laughs> I mean, that should have worked. That totally should have worked. Let's verify that. Uh, let's just go to root. Let's verify that update happened. Let's just cat it. Yeah, it worked.
<laughs> oh, I know it's wrong. I totally know it's wrong. Okay, never mind. It did work. It's Grub Terminal Output Console. It's always something silly, right? It's always something silly. Ah, all right. So this is easy fix. I'm such a goob. Let's go invim etc default. Or no, we'll do Grub. Grub two. Oh no, that's uh. What are these? Is this uh okay? Don't edit this file. Dude, they put configs everywhere. Like what? What config is it actually reading? Um. Whatever. All right. So we have that. We're gonna remove the etc default um oh no etc grub d 45 so let's just remove that we're getting that out of the way and then we're going to go invim etc default grub this is where you should be editing the files we'll just edit this console out actually let's just get rid of it so i'm not going to need to put that back in default let's switch our timeout to something like 30 seconds because i like to actually choose what i'm doing and bls config right here might be an issue but we'll see and let's do a sudo make config or, or actually we don't need to do that we need to do grub to mk config we'll do an output to boot grub to grub.cfg and I'm curious to see if it actually does read from this file. It should. And now when we reboot, it should work. If this doesn't work, then it is buried in inside the boot EFI, the boot EFI folder. It's just very convoluted on that. But I, it, technically this should work. I keep telling myself that. You will work, computer. You will do as I say. Otherwise, going in the workshop, getting the hammer. Hate to threaten you like this, but you've done pissed me off. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'm pretty sure that's it, George. Pretty sure. Pretty sure. <laughs> Uh, what's going on here? Okay. It's going to work. Probably. This doesn't work. We got, we got more things to go down the list. All right. Yeah. Didn't work. Okay. That's okay. It's totally fine. It's got to be reading from the EFI. EFI, uh, that's so weird. So, Fedora hides the grub config file and doesn't read from the default spot like every other distribution. In Red Hat's infinite knowledge, I'm, I'm fairly certain that's it. Unless there was something else. This is fine. It's totally, totally fine. Mm-hmm. 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 Okay. And now this is going to work. Yep. It's going to work. 100% working mm, yes. <laughs> that's what I'm talking about 
So now we got our beautiful loading screen. That is so weird that it buried it into the EFI. It was boot, EFI, EFI, Fedora, grub.cfg. Why? I don't know. That is bonkers. But regardless, we have fixed our boot system. 